Hey Level Up ladies, it's yours truly Joshi and welcome to the Level Up Podcast where I help aspiring young females level up to the boss they High always dream to be. you from low quality experiences and that's how Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> that man for the streets, okay? <laughs> Either you're gonna boss up or stand down, move forward or stay stuck, no failures, just lessons, the level up does not stop based on how you feel, sweetheart. Hey girlies, welcome back to another episode on the Level Up with Joshia podcast with your girl Joshia. And today's episode, I'm so excited. But before we get into that, I just want to know, girlies, what is your feedback on the new website? I created a brand new website. I feel like it fits my personality so much. And I just want to say again, thank you for... 1 million viewers on the Level Up with Joshia podcast hashtag. Thank you for 2.7 million viewers on the Pass Me the Wine ebook um, hashtag on TikTok. And I'm just really grateful. But I was so excited to release the new website to you because I feel like it's really me. And I, and I, I just love the aesthetic of the entire episode and you know what i i'm gonna go live i'm thinking about going live tomorrow night i'm gonna go live but i just want to say like really just thank you every day i'm so grateful when you push this podcast to girlies that need it because i know there are women out there that need it okay so as we get into today's episode this episode is honestly it comes at a perfect time because it is the it's it's gonna be posted the last day in the month and i want you all to know girlies that i went through a very very big transition in the past 30 days i've went through a big transition also in the past like six months okay and i'm gonna get into that i think i'm gonna do a joe tales and in this joe tales i'm gonna give you like a step-by-step guide and a story time on how I left a dusty man and and this was a very draining man okay and I want you to know six months ago I was unemployed right I had no funds I had no transportation I I I didn't even know if this podcast would still continue and then look now god is still doing amazing things in my life and i just can't wait to just share more with you what is my rabbit doing anyway so let's get into today's episode so 10 things i learned after leaving a dusty man girlies when i left mr dusty i could tell y'all something i left it was such a now that i think about it it's very comical but when I left that situation, it was very serious at the time. Now I can sit down and I can laugh at, about it. But there were certain life lessons that I learned from that particular um, relationship that I know that I'm not going to repeat those same mistakes again because at that time I felt horrible going through it. Okay? My rabbit is trying to push open the door. Smokey! <laughs> he hurt me. Okay, so the first lesson that I learned from leaving the Mr. Dusty is it's okay to start over. And when it's time to start over, it's never going to be the perfect time. It's always going to be the right time. That is something that I learned. Perfect timing and right timing are two different things. The right time can come at a point in your life when there's the most chaos and you have to leave that particular situation. And the perfect time is when everything aligns perfect for you and you can leave seamlessly. Life doesn't work like that. When I left any of my relationships, it was never the perfect time. It was always the right time. And I was so scared to start over. Because most of the times when I'm starting over, I have to walk out by faith where it's like literally just me and God. Where I'm now losing somebody that I feel helped me even though they don't. After you sit down and you analyze things, I feel like I'm leaving somebody that's helping me, but it's more that I'm leaving something that I'm used to. And the fear of the unknown is why I'm reluctant to leave and want to stay. Starting over is okay. I started over 30 days ago. I started over. I actually began starting over from 180 days ago when you look at it. Because 
I thought I started working again. Um, the book started to do tremendously well and I started to get align myself with what I want to do and I my goals were more clear well this time around, okay? And when I had to start over at thirty days ago, I was not prepared. I wanted to save a bunch I wanted to save a bunch of money. I wanted to have my car reach um the country first. Like I wanted to do all of these things. But there was so many chaos going on. I realized that the opportunity for me to leave was not at the perfect time, but it was the right time. And it is okay to start over. Many times I would start over and I and it hurts not to start over, right? But nothing seems to be in place for me to start over. But when I actually begin the process of starting over, things start to make sense. Okay? It's okay to leave the dusty man. It's okay. It's okay. You feel anxiety. You feel fear. I remember the first night that I spent in my apartment by myself after I left Mr. Dusty, I was scared. And I had, I was so scared. It was because I felt he was can come for me. I was scared because I was in my place alone. It was just me and my rabbits and I was just scared. And then after a while, I got used to it, and I started to be like, oh, he's never coming. And then I remember immense fear came over me again when I noticed that he was calling me. And I went through this conflict. I pick up and just tell him, like, you no good son of a bitch. Why are you calling my phone? Or just ignore it. And I made a decision to ignore it because it didn't make any sense. It was something that I was completely done with. So the first thing I learned from leaving Mr. Dusty is that it is okay to start over. The second thing that I learned from leaving Mr. Dusty is that an insecure man you can never fix. You can never fix an insecure man. And he pushed his insecurities on me so much that I am now at a place in my life. I pick myself apart for everything. I pick myself apart in what I produce for you. I pick myself apart for how I look, how much I weigh, because I was with somebody that never was happy with me. So I always said it was something wrong with me or there's something I have to fix. And it was because he was so insecure and I didn't realize that there was a point in my life that he wasn't there and life was good. Like you just say, yeah, life's good. And I'm now learning to love myself again and I'm now learning to do the things that I want to do because there were some times, like for example, because he was such a controlling person, I wouldn't like to go and get my hair and nails do because I felt he would have made me feel bad for spending money on those things. And he did. He did it. He did all the time. Like I remember I ordered from Fashion Over some clothes and it was actually clothes for my photo shoot. It wasn't like clothes for me to like just go out. And he threw in my face um, me buying clothes because he said he had all of these bills to pay. I remember I tell you, like, if you listen to, I don't think I said it. I think I already did, but I said in the episode that, Hey, I rather go a hundred percent by myself than 50, 50 with you. And I said that to him out loud. I will never go a hundred percent with you. I will never go 50, 50 with you because I could go a hundred percent by myself. Because me going 50-50 with you still takes away my peace. I don't have no peace if I help you pay bills. Okay? An insecure man will push his insecurities on you. And now I'm living with the repercussions of getting to know myself again. I'm now learning like some days like when I spend money on self-care like my hair, my nails, or my lashes. I'm now starting to get away from the guilt of being with somebody that made me feel extremely guilty for being me, for being young, for being attractive, for being all of this. I I would not like to exercise because if I go to the gym, um, when I come back from the gym, he's saying something like, oh, did your trainer come on to you or who talked to you in the gym and stuff like that. So it used to make me feel uncomfortable. And then I remember there was a time like I didn't have my own car, but I still wanted to exercise because I had already paid my trainer and everything. And then I remember he made up some type of excuse like, or oh, his car isn't riding too good. And I, I need, I need to be on his schedule and this back and forth to the gym is too much and this and that or whatever. But I knew that he just didn't want me to go to the gym because insecure insecure men 
they fear you being your best self. They fear you being your best self because they know when you enter that that arena of being your best self, you will attract better and they know they aren't the better. So now I'm at a point in my life, girlies, where I'm learning to get back to doing the things that I like to do. Because there was a time in my life I loved to go into the hairdresser. I loved getting my nails too. And then I was with somebody that made me feel uncomfortable about it. So one of the things you will always learn from leaving Mr. Dusty is that you can never fix him. Insecure men are dusty men. And an insecure man will project his insecurities on you. The next thing that I learned from leaving um, a Mr. Dusty before is that it's more power in leaving than staying. I used to say, maybe if I stay longer, it can get better. Maybe if I do this, it's going to get better. Joe, if you leave now, you're going to have to find money for this bill, that bill, etc., Joe, if you leave now, you're going to be by yourself. Joe, if you leave now, you're going to have to learn how to figure out the things that men usually figure out for you. Joe, if you leave now, it's not going to feel good. So that's the battle you go through in your mind. When you come to a point that you want to leave a dusty man, you go through this really, really hard conflict within yourself. Like, should I stay or should I go? Because in those moments where there are pockets of light, right? The pockets of light moments are considered the moments where there's a brief peace in the relationship, but you know, it's not long lasting because you and this person are not compatible and you cannot be together. Pockets of light make a lot of women stay in situations that should have been left a long time ago because you're reminiscing on the, the, the key moments where you were happy with this person, or you're reminiscing on the moments that there was peace at some point in the relationship. And a lot of times I found myself reminiscing on pockets of light within this, within the relationship that made me stay. And then when I really sat down and and let me tell you what I did when I left, what made me realize leaving is better than staying. I wrote down the advantages of the relationship. I, I, I want to see, do I still have this in my phone? Do I still have it? I'm going to look early. It's hold on. Because I wrote down literally, right? I wrote down literally the advantages and disadvantages in the relationship that I was in. And girlies, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The disadvantages outweighed the advantages. I think I only had like two advantages. And I had like 10 to 15 disadvantages of the situation. And then I realized this was a particular situation that it was better for me to leave than to stay. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. I remember after I wrote this list and I was mentally preparing myself to get up and leave because when I left this man, I didn't give an explanation. I didn't give an explanation. I didn't tell him what day I was going. I waited Tell he was to work and I I went to work like normal. And when I went home, I had three of my friends. We ran through that apartment like a thief in the night. We cleared my shit and we were out there before he reached home. Like that's that's the movie I cut. I cut that kind of movie. Because at that point I was already now sitting there thinking about I'm gonna leave you. <laughs> like I'm gonna leave you based on how you made me feel all of this time. I'm gonna leave you. And I can be honest with you. He made me feel this way so quickly, or it was just me being more sensible. And within the the second month of being with him, I realized that I don't want to be here anymore. You will never change. This is why I preach the theory of spinning the block on disrespect never makes things better. It's going to be good. You're going to have a pocket of light moment for a while, but it's going to leave eventually. And then after I wrote down the disadvantages and I realized it was better for me to leave, I started to write a letter as if I was writing this letter to him. And this letter, I said, my final thank you. And I'm still battling, should I put my final thank you letter in it? Because in that moment, when I wrote this letter, this was raw emotions and he never got this letter because I left it on an explanation. But this was like me me, me like venting and me, that was therapy for me to write my final thank you. Okay. 
And I remember one of my final thank yous to him in this letter. I said, thank you for telling me I was too high maintenance. It helped me realize my standards were higher than yours. That's powerful. That is so fucking powerful. Because in that moment, I realized that I was starting to understand what I needed. I realized that I realized what Joe needed. The next thing I want you to remember when you're leaving a dusty, and I think I'm going to put the final, my final thank you. I think I'm going to put that in my book. I think I'm going to put it. I just need to find where it's going to fit, right? But moving on, the next life lesson that I learned from leaving a dusty is that dusty men always believe in submission, okay? They always believe in submission, but never believe in giving you submission back. Let me tell you something. I remember there was a time as I, as I, I didn't make up my mind that I was leaving, right? And before I made up my mind I was leaving, I would do everything. I would cook, I would wash, I would clean, I would get up, make him breakfast when he comes home because he worked weird shifts. I would get up, cook him breakfast, go back to sleep, iron for work, go to work, come home, wash, cook, clean, do everything, right? And I remembered... As I was getting ready to exit this relationship, I wasn't, I like, when you're going through a lot, you're at least a man who understands this sex is the last thing on your mind. So as I started to lose attraction for him, I didn't want to sleep with him. And I made that known that I didn't want to sleep with him. And this get this this caused like the stripe. Like he got extremely um aggressive and very disrespectful. And he would tell me, like, well, when he was with this person and that person, this and that, this person wanted him, and he feel like I don't want him or this and that or whatever. And I really didn't want him. Women, before our bodies leave physically, our mind goes mentally. So I had mentally done left this man, although I'm performing these acts of service for him and i was like a robot i had no emotions for him i was sick i was tired and just being around him annoyed me there were days that i was hoping that his off day was in the same as mine and i remember he said something that you are not doing enough for your woman duties he said something like that to me and i think he said that because I did not want to sleep with him anymore because I had done made up in my mind and I had made it known now I will go 100% by myself before I go 50-50. And what he did in this time because he knew that I couldn't move right away or he knew at that time I couldn't afford to move right away. He would, he would make my life miserable and then he would get aggressive and he would get abusive. That's what he started to do. And I remembered when I wrote my final thank you, I wrote my final thank you to him. It was March... 24th right and I remember Gurlias after he told me you are not doing your woman do this because he believes that I should be submissive to him because he is a man and I remember there was a time things got so heated I went head to head with him like I was ready and I realized that he was not the man for me also in that moment because I I got very aggressive and very masculine and I was ready to go head to head with a man like I was ready like if you if you want fight in this house we can fight to the death like I was ready like I was in that mode and no man should ever get you to that mode because that means that's when you're at the height of defensiveness and I I got in a survival height of defensiveness and when he said that I realized that even in arguments he would say you don't respect me as the man of the house you don't respect this you don't respect that and to be honest with you women respect resources and I understand what Kevin Samuels meant you can't check a bitch because you have nothing to check with so for me I already lost this respect for you I already lost respect for you because of how you treat me and now to put the icing on the cake you want me to go 50 50 which I'm not doing and then to put the icing on the cake again you're telling me what I'm doing for you when you're doing nothing for me is not enough so of course I don't respect you anymore so now I'm going to challenge you every time you challenge me because now I understand Mr. Cinderella you want to go there with me and I'm a very strong headed person like I'm very strong headed and I'm very strong minded and and I can I can I can get like that and I realize a trade in dusty is they will always manipulate submission to work for them They do things like that. They manipulate submission to work for them. So when you don't rule, they would then say, you are not doing what you are supposed to do as a woman. And and that's what he did to me. 
And that in that moment, that was another life lesson I learned. But let me tell you, when I wrote my final thank you to him, I did not find an apartment as yet. And I remembered all month. I was telling my friends, I said, I have to find an apartment. I have to find an apartment. I have to find an apartment. And I said, Lord, and I remember praying. I, was, I used to pray every day. Every day I prayed in March and I said, Lord, find me an apartment by April 1st. I didn't know how I was going to get this apartment. There was an apartment that I liked. And the ones that I liked, they they had, like, I had to find furniture and things like that. Because when I move, I'm not moving with nothing at this point, really. I'm moving with just myself and my rabbits. Okay? And let me tell you something. God made it happen. I moved into my apartment April 1st. Claire's Day, April 1st. And I remember praying for it because I could not submit to a man that hated me because dusty men hate women. They hate your advantage in society. They hate how they hate your privilege in society. And they just hate women that they cannot use. That's how dusty men think. So that's why they leave from a place of submission. The next thing, and I'm going to do a two-part episode to this. I'm going to leave you on number five, right? A man who can't provide for you will aid you. That is the fifth lesson I learned from dealing with a dusty man. When you are a woman and you have to assume the role of provider, you will become age. You age quicker. Your mind ages quicker. Your body will then follow right? Because everything starts in the mind first. So now I'm going to be honest with you now, girlies. The reason that I feel I am so mature is because I have been with men that didn't provide for me. So my mind was always in an analytical state or a masculine state to figure out how to make shit happen. And when I was with this guy, because this was somebody that I went back to that I wasn't supposed to. When I went back to this guy, I remember the first time, it took me years to leave. When I went back, it took me a few months. By month two, month two or three, I knew I had to get the hell out of here. By month four, I was gone. Okay? I was, I was, I was skedaddled, right? And I remember every time I was with this guy, he made me more aggressive. But he made me more on, like, on point, like analytical, how to get shit happening. Because I know I couldn't depend on him for that. And then in that moment, when I realized that, I knew you will know, girlies, when you find your husband. And I'm going to find, I, I'm going to hope, I'm going to try to look for the video clip so I can insert it at the end of this episode. And this is when you know you really find your husband. And I, and I, and I could attest to this and what this guy said. When you find your husband, your mind is going to go from so active to a peaceful state, right? And you're going to trust that he can always make it happen. That's when you know you find your husband. You're going to trust that he can always make it happen. And they put you in a state of like a childlike state in a good way. Where you feel happy and warm and playful. Where you feel like you don't have to worry about tomorrow. Because children don't worry about tomorrow. Children don't even worry about what's going on today because they know mommy and daddy is going to get it done. When you find your husband, your husband puts you in that state of mind that daddy is going to get it done. And I realize I've never had that peace before. So I realized that I never was with the man that I was supposed to be with. Because I was always in a state where I had to figure things out. Because when situations arise, I was always the one to figure it out. And even if I had encountered men... That would help me figure it out. I didn't trust them enough because I did not trust myself to make the right judgment on the man I was dating. Which is why I abstained from sex after leaving that particular situation. And by leaving that situation and abstaining from sex and getting to learn the traits that I had to use in order to survive with a dusty. I am now learning that there are a lot of things that are trauma related that makes us respond in a way that we need to. So by being with a Dusty, it aged me mentally. Now I have wisdom, but sometimes persons don't always turn trauma into wisdom. I was just one of the lucky ones. I think God called me to be one of the ones to turn pain into wisdom. 
But there are some girlies that are not as fortunate as me. To break it down to you like this, to be able to help you. Girlies, I want you to know something. When you are with the incorrect man, he will age you. You will start to look older. You will start to think older. You will start to act older. But when you find a man that is for you, girly, he gonna put you back to like childhood again. You start to think younger. You start to look younger. And that's the, the relationship glue. The fuck boy free glow. Pardon my language. That's what it is. And now that I am seeing myself again, I'm doing the things that I love to do. I can look at myself in the mirror and I can now see a happiness. I can now see a joy. I can now be playful. And a lot of persons take me so serious because of the work I do and because of what I do on a daily basis. But I am a very fun frigging person. I was just with an older man that I allowed to groom me and I'm now unlearning. And I'm now taking back my youth. I'm now going out there more. Like I'm now going to be more interesting because that's what I was before I met him because that's what attracted him to me but girlies I'm gonna give you the other five in episode two but I just want you to know your happiness is still non-negotiable and the only way you can leave any dusty or learn from your dusty is by making that decision to make your happiness non-negotiable I have the shirts Go and check with the shirts on the website. Make that decision today. When you purchase that shirt, you are making an oath to not just me, but yourself. To say that your happiness is non-negotiable and you're going to take control of your life. I'm now taking control of my life in ways the little things do matter. I was so happy today to see my fridge full of greens. The kales and the spinaches and the apples and the, and the strawberries and the grapefruits. Because when I am stressed out, I junk eat. When, I structure, when I'm stressed out, I eat junk food. I have a craving for salt when I'm stressed out and, and, and sugar. And then I looked in the fridge today and I realized how different my fridge was stocked early is. I knew that my mind was starting to settle. Like I knew my mind was finally at peace. I knew that I was finally getting back to me because I looked in that fridge and I became very emotional. Like I wanted to cry because I couldn't do that for a very long time. Like I couldn't eat what I wanted to eat because he didn't like those things. I couldn't eat what I wanted to eat because I didn't have the appetite for it. But God put me back in a better state now. Leaving dusties, you will always go and learn life lessons from it. I can't wait to give you part two of this episode. But girlies, go and check out the new podcast. I mean, go and check out the new website. Go and get your merch. Make that oath today. May Every time I want to come on TikTok, now I'm going to be wearing that shirt. Make the oath today to take your life serious and take your life back from a dusty. Don't let these F boys make you feel or these f ninjas ninjas make you feel as if that you don't have power today take your life back stop allowing that relationship to drain you you know he's never gonna marry you take your life back i fought for my life because i have girlies that are listening to me and i'm and let me tell you something i know conk and i know hypocrite the advice that i give y'all i take it myself and i can say it works take your life back When you purchase that shirt, you make an oath. Take your life back. Your happiness is non-negotiable. When you go and you buy that Pass Me The Wine e-book, you're taking your life back. Read the book, girlies. It's a very short read. It's almost like, and the next book I'm putting out is like a Bible. It's a manual. Because ain't nothing to compare to the word of God. So we can call this a manual. It is a manual that when you're in different stages of dating, you could read that manual and you will have a better understanding. That's how teachable my next book will be. Go and pre-order it. Only $9 on Amazon for pre-orders. Go pre-order the new book. And in the meantime, until it drops, go and read the Pass Me The Wine book. You are going to learn a lot Take your life back early. Stop playing. You ain't getting no younger. You need to capitalize on your youth now. Capitalize on your mind and your ideas now. Take your life back. 
the minute I walked away from that man, I took my life back. And he knew he was losing control when there was no more response. He knew he was losing control when I said, I ain't going 50 with 50, 50 with you. F that. I'm going I'm to go 100 by myself and I can find a man who could go 100 with me. I probably could pay 100 in your bills. Okay? And whatever else you're trying to bring to this table. Some type of, some type of lopsided contract. No, take your life back. Take your life back. You're going to be okay. You're going to have some hard days, but your hard days ain't compared to your good days when you take your life back. Leave. Ask women who leave how much peace they had when they left. Thank you for tuning in to another episode, girlies. And I will see you next time on another Level Up with Joshia, the podcast. Bye.